a lot of people that you know probably don't want to pay for your services. They, you know, they think they can get it cheaper because they know you. Some people call it hump day. I call it podcast release day. Welcome to another episode of the Skid Steer Nation podcast. Like every other week that you've listened to this, my name is Ryan Deemer, and today we've got a gentleman who proudly served the United States Marine Corps. Thank you for your service. Lives in Columbia, South Carolina. No, he has not met Darius Ruckers, and he is in land management, doing lots of forestry mulching and then some other work along the way. He started his business in 2022, and uh, he's been growing like a weed. So it is my pleasure to introduce Lee Gums to the show today. Lee, welcome. Hey, how you doing today? I'm great, sir. How about yourself, man? I'm good. Doing good. Yeah, we're. Uh, it's the first week of January that we're doing this recording. And um, what's the weather like out there in South Carolina? Today is about 55 and sunny. You know, uh, and it's, it'll be warm and sunny, warm and rainy, and then cold and sunny. It just won't snow. Uh, yeah. Well, if I was talking to you two weeks ago, I'd have been extremely jealous. I think we had a negative air temp of like an air temp of negative 13 negative 11 but uh, right now we're sitting about 46 47 degrees so i'm for i'd, I'd rather have four, 55 but we're not too far behind you right now so yeah i'm ready for the sun and the rain to stop so yeah I, i'll tell you what man like charleston south carolina i've never been to columbia but like charleston south carolina is my favorite town in the country it's beautiful yeah it's and, and it's amazing like it's so beautiful it's a it's a very astute town like there's a lot of wealth and like wealthy but man yeah. they walk around like they've got nowhere to be it's just so chill and laid back oh yeah it's a great we got family down there and it's always fun going down there and hanging out yeah i proposed to my fiance in in uh on battery street in in an old house did you yeah yeah it's so good, it's a great place yeah i mean if, if you can't find something to do in charleston south carolina then you and i probably can't be friends because there's a lot to do there yeah, there really is. So awesome, man. So County Line Land Management, that's your company, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. And um, we were just talking before the show, like you were in tree service work and saw saw an opportunity and upgraded some equipment and we just went full bore into this. How's the journey been these last two or three years? It's been good. It's been a huge learning experience. Um you know, I worked after I got in the military, I worked for other people for six years and then finally got to realization that I wanted to work for myself. Um, but it has been a huge, huge learning curve. I mean, from relations to quoting to time management, I mean, the whole I mean, I didn't have experience really doing any of that stuff. So it was a complete, you know, cold plunge for me uh, diving headfirst into it. But it's it's been a, a wild ride for sure. Nice. I'm always curious, like, what was it about working for somebody else that triggered the emotion for you to want to be your own boss? A frustration. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, once you, I mean, I've been in construction and truck driving since I got out of the military and you would work and work and work and work and you'd give so much of your energy and your time and your soul to these people and it wouldn't matter. I mean, it would, but it wouldn't. You know, at the end of the day, so I just got, I got frustrated that I couldn't move up. Yeah. Um, and I would have ideas and suggestions. And because of my position and lack of college degree or whatever it was, I couldn't do anything about it. You know, so then I would quit and go somewhere else. And then I would do the same thing over and over again. And that's when I finally realized like, all right, I just need to, I need to at least try it. At least if I, if I try it and fail, at least I say I did it. Yep. You know? So. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy when you get to that realization like, oh, this is going to be the carousel of my life if I don't get off this horse. Yeah. Like, there is no better company. They're all, it's all going to be the same experience, just a different name on the paycheck. And I mean, there is there is a lot of people that are entrepreneurs that do great things and have an amazing career and don't have the stresses of an entrepreneur. But I just never found that. So. Yeah. I chose the entrepreneur path because I never could find a entrepreneur path that I liked. So people are just built different, man. Like, I mean, the more and more I read about like personality types of entrepreneurs, the more I, the more I realize that this is why I've always been a terrible employee and spent a majority of my adult life owning businesses. 
How'd you get into uh, attachments? Oh, man. I'll give you the distilled version so we don't take the whole hour on me. But uh, yeah. so in college, I started working at a bar night at a bar, college bar, and I just literally fell in love with it. Like, I didn't even care about school at that point. And it wasn't so much the partying aspect of it. Like, it was something about the controlled chaos. And like, yeah. man, like you get 10 people build like running around working and you get 150, 300 people, 500 people that are just going crazy. And it works. Yeah. And like for my attention span, it worked awesome because I, I like instant results. Yeah. So like I fell in love with that industry and um, like I basically failed out of college and then went back to college to get my degree and quickly realized I didn't care about it. So I was a GM of this two story college nightclub and loved every minute of it. When I was 25, an opportunity came up for me to buy my own bar in yeah. Peoria, Illinois. So I did. And I did that. And I brought my brother along for the ride. I don't know if he loves me or hates me for that. Um, by 28, we had two nightclubs and a restaurant, 110 employees. Yeah. And then 2008 recession hit and it was back to just me and my brother in one bar and yeah, burned myself out trying to keep it going, like not recognizing it was a sinking ship in the economy and the location. And like, I just thought right. things were stacked against it. Finally closed it at the end of 2011 and 2012. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I just had to get out of the house. So I took a job for a friend of mine's company as a salesperson for yeah. $12 an hour plus commission. And it just happened to be skid steer attachments. Yeah. And um, I think it was 14 months after I started there, they fired the entire management staff, made me the GM. And I ran that business. Basically, I, I met with the owners once a month for the first four or five years. And then after that, I met him maybe once a quarter and I ran that company for eight or nine years and they're getting ready to sell it. And I didn't want to work for new owners. Yeah. So I left and then COVID hit and it was just the perfect time to start skid steer nation. So I did. That's awesome. So yeah, kind of a unique way of getting into construction, but it was the business yeah. principles I knew from the bar industry that gave me the opportunity to run the manufacturing company. Yeah. And then, um, just my love for online. I'm just so intrigued by online marketing and like, oh, you can work anywhere. There's an internet connection. Like you don't have to sit in a building. And you can reach all the people. Yeah. So that was kind of like the vision behind Skid Steer Nation was just like, it fits the life that I want to build for myself with the knowledge that I have of the equipment and the industry. And I just kind of merged the two together to, to build what I wanted to build for myself. That's cool, man. Yeah. Thank you, man. I think that's the secret to, to longevity is finding something that you have a strong passion or interest in and, and either developing the skills to keep doing it or already have the skills and then turn it into a way to make money. Yeah. Because if you just chase dollar signs, you'll, you'll be just as miserable as the guy punching the clock. No, you can't chase money. Yeah. It's got to be about a greater purpose than that or you won't mm -hmm. make so I was going to wait till later in the show, but like, I'm just like a kid in a candy store when I read things like this. So I'm just going to bring it up now on your profile on Facebook. You talk about being a lifelong student of personal development. Yeah. I have to learn more about this, man. You gotta, you gotta like get like open the book and like read me some chapters of the, of the Lee gums, personal development theory. Oh man. Um, so I, uh, I've really been diving deep into personal development probably a couple of years now, like really get into it. I met my wife. We started dating in 2020 and about a year in, uh, I just, I had to do something different. Um, I mean, we were good, but like I wasn't fulfilling myself. I knew I wasn't fulfilling my purpose in life and I was a truck driver at the time. So I started listening to podcasts. Um, and I started getting into the personal development state space in the podcast world. And um, that real, I started listening to Andy Frisella, if you know who that is. <laughs> real and AF, man, by Andy Frisella. He lives I, right down the road from me about two hours. Well, I uh, that's how I got into it was him. I started listening to his stuff. I started to, I mean, I use his first form supplements. And um, I did 75 Hard, which is his program. Um, me and my wife did it together. I lost 75 pounds. Um, I've been sober for over a year. Um, and it's, it's, I've really got into like, you know, 
vib- energy vibrations and, you know, positivity and how I look at things and how I shape. Cause I feel like it's helped me in my entrepreneurial journey because of ways I look at situations that come up, whether it's a breakdown or a, uh, a job that takes longer than it's supposed to, or a, a customer relation that just doesn't go the way you want it to go to how I look at those situations is going to determine the outcome of it. And, um, I mean, I read all every day. I'm reading something. I mean, just every day I'm working on myself. Every morning I wake up, work on myself so that I can give myself to the world, which is a Wes Watson quote, if you know who Wes Watson is. And that's just a little a little snippet of my personal development uh, journey. So, All right. So, so when January came along, I actually committed to a new morning routine for myself. Yeah. So before I talk about mine, like what is your morning routine when you say every morning you work on yourself? So every, every day I get up, um, I make, I cook breakfast, which is a big deal to me and I, I read. So I read like a little short, um, passage right now. I'm reading it's what's called fire starters 365. And it's just like a little snippet of stuff just to kind of get me going and also read my Bible. Um, you know, we're Christians and I'll read a devotion and I'll read a passage in the Bible and that's just what I do every single day. And then I go work out and that's how I start every single day. doesn't matter what day of the week it is. That's what I do. And that I love it, me man. That's the rest of the day. So and you just feel like you've, like you've already accomplished stuff. You feel like you've got drive and purpose and focus. It's, it's a, a game changer when you follow a morning routine. What's your routine, man? So, I mean, I used to be pretty fit and then I don't know, it just kind of let it go away. And then my, I, I was a caretaker for my parents for like a year and a half. And then yeah. they both passed away. And like the, the, all of 2023 was just kind of like, you're just kind of like being, that's how I felt. Yeah. So I, I was like the, October, November, I started feeling better, but I still had no energy to work out because I was really embarrassed about where I was at. And I'm like, God, oh, this is going to suck mentally. Like, Oh, that's all I can lift or I can only run that far. Right. So I, you push it off. So January, I'm like, Hey, I need to do something different. And, you know, and I'm not 22 anymore. So I found this, this thing like Tim Ferriss talked about it years ago. It's called the 30, 30, 30, where within 30 minutes of waking up, you have a breakfast of a minimum of 30 grams of protein, followed by 30 minutes of steady state cardio where your heart rate's 135. Right. So it's like walking. And I, I always wanted to read and I love reading, but I never make time for it. Or I always forget it. So now every morning I wake up at 6 a.m., I make a protein shake because that's the easiest breakfast for me to get my 30 grams. While I'm drinking that shake, I review the tasks and goals and projects for the company for 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. And then I jump on an exercise bike. And for 30 minutes that I'm on the exercise bike, I read. So I've read three books in the month of January. It's awesome. And I, I, I can get down a rabbit hole where I get sucked into a, I get something and just lose, a, every, lose clarity of everything else. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, Hey, for every business book you read, you have to read a personal book too. Yeah. So I like right. I went from like a you know how to change habits and create habits on a personal level, right? Um, and it was actually by a pastor named Craig Groeschel. So a lot of the 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 a lot of it was faith based and yeah. like understanding why and how to do it through Christianity. And then the next book I read was like uh, buying back your time, like hiring admin assistants and developing these plans and what quadrants work goes in. Yeah. And that yeah. was so geeking me out that I was wanting to buy like 10 X is easier than two X. And I wanted to buy And I'm like, no, 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 no. We got to go back to another personal development book. And then, so now I'm reading a book called, it's um, called, I never pronounce it right. Ikigai. It's a Japanese word for how to, how to live a long, fulfilling life. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I, I, I never read, like I hated reading in high school. And then I didn't read a book when I got out. And then I started that program and you have to read part of the program as you got. Yeah. And so I, I now I'm like you, man, I jump, I've read a whole freaking stack of books in the past two years. Um, whole bookshelf full of books. My wife gets on me because I'll start ordering books before I finish my last one. Uh, we well, have to, so it's ready to go when you finish yeah, it. You, like I gotta have a stack of books yeah. ready to go all the time. I get, I get eye rolls for that too. So there was a, uh, Ramit Shetty. He has a book called, I will teach you to be rich. And it's basically just stupid principles. Like just do them every day and you, you can't be broke anymore. But he had a theory, like he got to a certain point in wealth where he said, I don't ever have to wonder if I have the money to buy a book. 
and books are always valuable, whether I read it now or don't read it for a year from now. Yeah. But he just set a rule for himself. He's like, instead of having to think about whether I should buy this book, if I see a book and I'm interested in it and I want it, he goes, I just buy it. And there was something about what he said just made me click. I'm like, how many hours have I spent in the last two years pondering if I should buy a book? Yeah. Like, what could I have used that energy on other than thinking about buying a book? MLS so, is the same thing. Yeah. So I, I'm at a point now where like, if a book intrigues me, I just buy it and I'll have three or four or five books sitting that I haven't read yet. I do the same thing. And then um, and now that I'm reading 30 minutes a day, I'm like, I need a bigger pile because I'm burning through them. Yeah, you will burn through them faster than you can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I, my goal was 10 pages a day, just like the 75 heart program. Yeah. Um, but if I'm just sitting on the bike riding at a steady pace, like, why not read the whole 30 minutes? Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, you always so, books. Yeah. And then, yeah. So that and I spent, I try to make sure I'm very aware of decisions I make. Yes. That's been the hardest one for me. So, like even yesterday morning's a great example. I found three different topics between looking at information on Shopify, which is host of our store and some new things they've got going on, a marketing technique, a guy on X was talking about, which used to be Twitter and then yeah. something else. And I'm just like, Ooh, I want to do all of these. And I, and I just stop right there and I just go opportunity or distraction. That's what yeah. I ask myself. Yeah. Like, is this an opportunity or is it a distraction? Yeah, I have to remind myself the same thing. Um, yeah. It's like, okay, do I need to, because I give so much energy into things. It's like, okay, is this a now thing or is this a little bit later thing? Yeah. Um, and I have to teach myself patience with that too and, and evaluate, um, evaluate conversations with people. It's amazing how negative people are all the time. Crazy. And it's like, it's and the thing is, is if, if someone's talking, even if it's just a little bit, but then if you tweak the conversation a, a little bit, you can turn it into a pot. Like the person's going to go with you on the positive track without even thinking about it because you're doing it. But people are just so negative. It's, it's something that I've become aware of a lot over the past year. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, there's a, I don't talk to hardly anybody, either friend or acquaintance that I talked to six years ago. Oh, me either. Yeah. You know, and not saying that they're bad people. They're all being, they're all well. They have families. They have a job and they do great. But the alignment of what we want from life and where we want to go and what we want to give is not the same. And I found myself fighting with them instead of growing with them. Well, you're, the, I mean, essentially you're the average of the five people you spend most time with. John Lee Dumas, man. Love it. So it's like if you evaluate, and me and my wife are in that situation, we're kind of in that gray space of, we don't necessarily have a, a group of people because we're in that different circles. We're in between circles. Yeah. And so, and, and I remind her of that um, because you're right. If you, if you surround yourself with people, you want to be, you essentially want to be the dumbest person in the room because then you're going to grow because of everyone else around you. I like to be the second dumbest person in the room. Cause I still yeah, want to be able to person. teach somebody, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> Like I want to learn a lot, but I still want somebody that can look to me for guidance too. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah, because if you're always the dumbest guy in the room, you just start to think you're dumb. Like, I, I don't want to feel that way. So you want to at least have, you know, you one mentor, mentee. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, at least one. You know, I'll take yeah. three. Got mentoring me, and I'll mentor one. So. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's funny, man. That's funny. Yeah, it's you and I have a lot of the same philosophies and principles, man. In fact, one of the things that I was reading, and I, I'm awful remembering authors and books, titles and all that, but like they talked about where you're saying, like, we're in between groups. We don't really have a lot of tight friends. So what yeah. they did to strengthen their relationship, him and his wife, was they found family, they found couples at their church that they wanted to replicate and have a life like. Yeah. And they would make like once a month, they would go out and have like a, a double date night or a dinner with one of the other couples from church. Yeah. So, so they could spend time, get to know and learn how they handle adversities, how they grow and work together and just spend time with people that they looked up to as to how they modeled their, their family life. That's a great, that's a great way to do it. Um, and I know like there's a quote that says comparison is a thief of joy, but it depends on how you look at it. If you compare yourself to someone in a positive way, it can actually lead you down the path you want to go down. 
Yeah. Are you coveting it? Like, are you wishing it was yours instead or are you using it as a roadmap so you don't have to go through all the pitfalls yeah, to get to the finish you line? It possible. You say, okay, well, if that person did that, then I can do that. And it's a motivator yeah. instead of a, a negative thing. So, Or like yeah. if you blow off the handle whenever she brings up a certain topic and you don't know how to stop yourself and like you can talk to this other couple and learn like, yeah. oh, I, I know like this is how I stop doing that. And like, that's like now he's mentoring you and how to be a better man. Right. It's yeah. so, and we always have room to go. Like the day that we're done being students is the day we're in the ground. Exactly. I mean, you get every day, every single day you can get better. Every single, you're never going to be a hundred percent. You're always going to have room to get better in some part of your life. Yeah. And I had to quit judging myself for not being be be more better, more better. I had to quit judging myself for not being f as far along in the progress as I mentally thought I could be. Like, yeah, do you run into that too. Yeah. Oh, like yeah, the yeah. expectations we put on ourselves are so unobtainable and then we get so beat up that we didn't reach them. Oh yeah. It's like, or you have a bad, you have like a bad mental headspace for a day and you get all mad at yourself because you thought you were past it. And it's like, no, you're, you're actually never past that. It's just another yeah. day of growth that you have to go through. Um, and, and that's with everything. I mean, business, finance, relationship, family. I mean, there's, you can't beat yourself up. As long as you are actively pursuing what you want in life every single day and taking the small steps to make the habits to make you the better person, you can't be mad at yourself. Yeah. And then I've also, can't, I've, I've taken the philosophy and again, don't know I remember where I got it from, but like, just like nature, we have four seasons of our life. Mm -hmm. Like, whenever things are amazing and rocking and rolling, like you're in your summer season, like the sun's shining, things are just kicking butt. Nothing's going wrong. Winter's coming. <laughs> right? Like some aspect of your life, something is going to create that negative mental space or this, yeah. that blah feeling. And I had to learn to be like, you, you can't avoid winter. So you have to learn how to accept it and just be okay with it. Because the more I fought the winter seasons, the longer they lasted. And the quicker I can go, hey, it is what it is. We just got to keep pushing and didn't fight it. It seemed to be a shorter winter season for me. Yes. Because if you live in fear of winter, it's just always going to be there. No, but like when winter would arrive, I'm like, no, fuck this. I'm not dealing with winter. Like we got to get back on track. And like, I would just have that like go to gun ho attitude and it would just last forever. Right. And I finally just said, you know what, I'm going to work at 50% this week. Cause that's all I got. And I'm okay with it. Like I found that the winter seasons would zip past quicker. Yeah. As long as you're doing what you need to do. Yeah. Not just being consumed with the lack. You're still making progress. It's yep. just or less of it or whatever it is. Just look, it's, it's all about perspective. If you, if your perspective on it is good, it will be good. Mm hmm. And, and then we, I also find that, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, we choose how we perceive things. So it's like, yes. um, if we perceive them as bad, we're allowing it to be bad. If we, it's like the old, you know, everybody's like, oh, the calmest guy in the fight wins is because he's not allowing himself to see it as, as that. He's just being himself and being calm and thinking clearly. And so as long as we perceive everything as that, we're going to be, it's going to be okay. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason they teach special operators slow is smooth, smooth is fast, you know, and, and the same can be applied to your personal life. Like if you're running around chaotic and like trying to put fires out, then you're going to continue to have more fires. That's all you're going to do. Yeah. It's the fire down. Yeah. You get more of what you're doing. Yes. Exactly. And Lee, like kindred spirits today. I feel like this podcast was meant to happen. Um, all because I read one sentence, lifelong student of personal development. I'm like, we're going to get along A-OK -okay today. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, man. Yeah, it was a great, great little conversation. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, some of the guys out there that are fighting their personal development and growth probably want to hear more about your business, your struggles, and like the tips and tricks to get better at their own business. We should probably dig into a little bit about that too today. All right, we can do that. So, so yeah, so you were telling me that you were kind of doing some tree service work, ended up buying a skid steer with a forestry mulcher, you built a little website and you've been rocking and rolling for the last couple of years doing other services too, but trying to have a focus on land management and clearing. How's yeah. that working for you? And how's that, how, how are you progressing on 
and your track to business growth? Well, I, and I would, I say this pretty much to everybody. I mean, for the, where we're at is we're, I'm blessed. Me and my wife are blessed. I mean, you know, I didn't have a, didn't have a Facebook page, didn't have social media. I had nothing. And then I started a business and created all of it. And it's just, it's been a, it's been a lot of learning experiences. I mean, I've, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've worked with people that I shouldn't have been worked. I've been influenced by people I shouldn't have been influenced by. I've made purchases that I shouldn't have made. I mean, you know, which every, every person in this field does, you know, everybody's going to make a bad decision. Everybody's going to make a bad purchase. Everybody's going to listen to somebody they shouldn't listen to. But I, I feel very blessed that those mistakes happened at such an early stage when it was just me on the line. I mean, me and my wife, but I didn't have employees. I wasn't paying nobody except yeah. me. So I wasn't. The mistake didn't negatively affect somebody else. Yeah, it was just me. Um, but it's been it's been I mean it's been great, but it's been hard. I mean, entrepreneurship is a hard path. You know, I mean, there's a bunch of guys on the internet that say it's the best thing since sliced bread, and it's hard. I mean, it's twenty four seven. It's hard, but it's worth. In my opinion, it's worth it. Sure. It is. And, and, and what you'll find if you follow anything like the path that I was on, you'll find that the longer you're an entrepreneur, the more you realize that the training you received in the military is yeah. super beneficial because frameworks and processes and SOPs mm -hmm. can remove 80% of the headaches. Or there's a lot of tasks that we do every day that don't require the owner to do them. And I once we can let go actually, of that, I was going to say your last podcast was or one of your last ones was about that. It was a good one. Yeah. Like the sooner you can let go of like having to have control of your baby. Yeah. The faster you can grow. Yeah. In fact, I'm in the process of building out SOPs and I call them playbooks to give up my calendar and all of my email accounts to one of my employees. Like I will no longer be in charge of my, any emails or my own calendar. I freaked out a little bit. Um, I, I gave up email a while ago and I, but I didn't give her the clear path to do it. Yeah. So really I'm not too worried about it. I'm actually excited about it. Like, Oh, if I want to schedule a haircut, I got to ask her when I can do it. I, I kind of excited about this. Like, yeah. And the second thing that people don't realize is like, let's say for me specifically, like I only want to do podcast interviews on Tuesdays and Fridays. Yeah. Well, if I'm messaging a guy and he's like, I can't do Tuesday or Friday, but I got time Wednesday afternoon. I might go, Hmm. Well, okay, that's fine. I don't normally do it, but I'll do it. Yeah. And now my whole Wednesday gets off track. Right. Where my assistant will be like, no, how about next Tuesday or third Friday? Because she's not going to break the Tuesday, Friday rule because it's not her schedule. Right. She's not emotionally attached to it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So like it actually keeps you more focused in the tasks and the timeframes that you want to focus on is what I'm learning. Yeah. So. No, it's going to be a struggle for me. I know whenever I get to the point where I have to put an operator in the seat of the machine and leave them alone because they don't own it, you know, so it's always a little scary when you first start putting people in machines and stuff like trucks and stuff like that that don't own it because you're worried about how they're going to take care of it. But I'm hoping because of having to manage people in the military, I'll be able to, you know, vet my uh, crew well enough to where I could, there is that trust of like, okay, I can leave y'all alone and I can go do what I need to do over here and the work still gets done. Yeah. I, and, and Lee, what I've found is like everybody's searching to be a part of a community. Yes. Yeah. Right? So, and like everybody wants a vision to buy into and like work together with other people to achieve. It's a natural thing. It's yeah. so, I mean, it's human nature. Yeah. So if you're really good at developing and nurturing and that culture and that vision of where the 10 year plan is and letting your employees be able to grab a part of that for themselves. Yeah. Like nine, nine out of the 10 of the, the struggles that you're, or the fears that you're having in your head won't even be an issue. Yeah. Cause you'll have such a good group of people around you. Good yeah. Family, and it won't even matter. Yeah. And like if somebody breaks a piece of machinery and you look in their eyes and you can see that they've been, beating the bejesus out of themselves and they're just disgusted that it happened and they don't know how the accident happened. Like you don't need to beat them up anymore. I guarantee you it'll never happen again. Yeah. They've already beat themselves up enough. All right. If they don't care, then you're like, maybe you're not a good fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, oh, you're like, sorry. Whoops. My bad. I'm like, nah, maybe we're not a good fit. 
Yeah, like, we'll move on here. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to shoot my TikTok so I could get some more followers showing them how I work in a skid steer. I'm like, okay. Yeah, acting like it was their skid steer or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. no kidding, right? Yeah. 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 Go down the street and borrow that dude's Bentley, too, while you're at it, and you can make a rap video. Oh, you go to the rental go to the rental yard, take a bunch of pictures of the rental equipment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No kidding, man. No kidding. Uh, so forestry mulching, I feel like from a masculine point of view, like every guy wants to do it. Like who doesn't want to just have massive RPM machinery zipping in a circle in front of them and just re like reducing trees to nothing. Right. Like I, I get the allure why everybody loves doing it. Yeah. Did you get into it because like you like, like that looks cool. I want to do that. Or did you have like a specific need arise through a customer and you're like, Oh, this can be extremely fulfilling and profitable for me in my area. So I got into it because the tree service that I was working with uh, told me that he had all kind of work. I mean, all, you know, all had all this work. He didn't do forestry mulching, but he said, hey, you know, you come, you know, work under my umbrella. I was a 1099 guy, you know, uh, but uh, you you get a machine. I'll sub you out to all these all these jobs. He's, you know, these, you know, one, two acre clearing jobs that I'm getting and cleanup jobs and all this kind of stuff. And like you said, every, it's just a cool looking thing. I mean, everybody likes it. You know, I mean, every customer, every dude customer that I have is like, man, I wish I could, you know, they all say the same thing. I mean, it's just a testosterone. It's great. And so, and there's money there. I mean, it's profitable as long as you can, you know, uh, price accordingly and you take care of your equipment, just like anything else in the world, as long as you take care of your stuff and you price accordingly. You're going to make money with it. Um, but I got into it because I was told that there was a lot of work and I was going to be able to be provided a lot of work. And that's what pushed me in that direction of, you know, buying the head with the machine. And then once I got into it, uh, I did a, a, a lady that works with my wife as a teacher. Her husband's been doing it for 20 years and he's a. Uh, you know, we're now we're friends and, you know, he's a, he's a good mentor to me now and stuff. But in the beginning it was because I was told there was a lot of work. So that's why I went that way. Okay. And I'm going to take a shot in the dark and say, there's not anywhere near that much work no. from, from the him. None. Yeah. No. Which is why he didn't invest in the equipment to do it. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, I'll get uh, this guy to do it and I'll make 10% off his work and just schedule it. Like it's simple. Yeah. Uh, so no, I, ha I don't, I don't work with that person anymore and I don't have any kind of relationship anymore with that person. Um, uh, but that's how I got into it. Um, but then it's just been all me since then, really. Yeah. So, what made you stay in that lane? Just cause you had the, inv the capital investment, in the equipment, or like, were you able to get some decent leads and some projects to keep you moving forward and say, okay, this is the right market for me in this area? Uh, the biggest thing was the in the beginning the biggest thing was the uh, equipment i mean i had yeah. it sitting at the house you know and when i got into it it was uh, it was winter season it was muddy it was wet you know so i was doing a lot of driveway work because you know rural driveways aggregate driveways had to be repaired had to be scraped and so but the, the head was sitting at the house and i was like man i gotta get and once i got a couple jobs in my belt it really was like okay i i enjoy doing this um there's a lot of headache involved in that kind of work. If something happens, like a fence gets wrapped up in the head or, oh, you, yeah. find, you know, some, some, you find something that's been buried for a hundred years and, you know, that kind of stuff. But once I got those couple of jobs under my belt, it was like, okay, this is what I primarily like to do. I like the mulching. I like the clearing and, you know, but I still do the great and dirt work too. Cause the dirt work and stuff's always going to be there. Yeah. Um, I got a question for you on those, on like the driveway, especially like you were talking about, they always need repaired and this and that. Yeah. I've talked to a few guys about this, like off air and a few of them go like, Oh, I could see the value in that. And other guys are like, I just don't know if they don't grasp it or they don't think it's a good idea. I, I, I don't know. I'm just going to say it. It is what it is. We're on the show. So whatever. I've always envisioned creating like basically a subscription service for driveway repair where they pay a quarterly or annually fee and it gets them one or two maintenance grades throughout the year. Yeah. And then like 
it doesn't cover material and you redoing the whole driveway when it needs it. But like after a bad rainy season, like you've been six months, like I'll just come by and spend 30 minutes. They don't need to know it's 30 minutes, right? Uh, you will have a new top coat clean, no potholes, no washboards. We'll yeah. just invoice you every quarter. And like for me, I was like, hey, one, you could create recurring revenue. Two, you're back on the property to look for other projects that they potentially could need. And you already have a relationship with them on trust. And then the third thing for me was you can protect your schedule. Yeah. Because you could like, hey, oh, that job canceled and you don't have any work today. Go grade those three driveways. I'll call and tell them we're coming by today to do it. Yeah. Or, oh, we have 25 on the, on the, on the plan. These five are all within a seven mile radius. We'll do all those on one day. Like we can just minimize mobilization and fuel and the whole nine yards and fill in yeah. soft spots in the schedule. Cause nobody's ever booked out every day for six months. I just, shit happens. No guys. I mean, I don't know. Guys say they're booked up for six, seven, eight, eight months. Um, like you said, stuff happens. People cancel. I mean, people forget too. I mean, people forget a month, a week, a week, you know, two yeah. weeks. You know what I'm saying? So, um, no, I mean, I think it's a great idea. And I've talked, I, I have had that conversation with people, um, not on the driveway side, but on the mulching side, as far as like um, retention ponds. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, like I'll go by and I'll go check them like once a year. You know, I'll kind of ride by there and look at them and check them. And, you know, if it needs to be mowed again, then I'll say something to them. But essentially, that would be a great plan for people with driveways. Because it would be, it would, it would work. I mean, it would, it would be a great thing for them, and they wouldn't have to worry about it. But there's a lot. Of, what happens a lot is people forget. You know, you go do their driveway, and 12 months later, it needs work, and they can't remember your name. They can't. You know, if you're not active on social media nowadays, they forget, and then they put it out there again. Oh, I'm looking for so and so, and then they get whatever flavor of the week shows up, and then it's a you know, reoccurring thing. Yeah. And then I think it's more about creating the offer for that, right? Like how often are you going to bill them? What's the cost going to be? What's the value adds that they get to that? Right. Yeah. Like, and I'm not going to tell you what it is because every area is going to be different, but I mean, be creative and make it so, so viable to them. They're like, Oh, this is a great deal for $40 a month or I mean, $300 a quarter. And that means you're getting 1200 bucks a year from them and you're only on their property for two or three hours for the whole year. It's well, it's a whole lot easier to fix a little, like if it's just a oh. little than having to go in and fix ruts and like complete disaster every 12 months. I, I'll tell you what, man, like we sell those, those open box blade graders for skid steers and they've got two or four blades in them to work forward and backwards. Yeah. And if you have a driveway that's in bad shape, but not awful shape, like I literally graded out, I think we figured it out. It was 1800 feet long driveway. And I wanted to grade, and it had huge grass in the middle, potholes, like just hadn't been taken care of for three, four years. Yeah. And I was like, Hey, we got to grade that and get it all smooth and level before we bring the new material in. Cause we can't just dump it on top. I wanted to grade it all out first. Yeah. It makes it easy. Yeah. My buddy's like, well, that's going to add like three hours worth of work to the job. I'm like, no, it won't. I took that grader. He had never used one before. And he went up and down three times at like four miles an hour and it was done. And he was like, that was 15 minutes, 20 minutes worth of work. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> like, that's why I said, do a maintenance program and you zip in, zip out. They're not yeah. home. They don't know how long it took them. They just know it looks great and they don't have to worry about any potholes. Well, it's like landscapers in the summertime. Yeah. Same thing. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a great. I, I think it's a great idea. I'm not sure why guys wouldn't think it's a good idea. It's great. Idea. I never heard anybody doing it either. I'm sure there are some companies, you know, that have programs and stuff in place like that, or, or like. Well, I mean, you go on contract for snow removal. You go on contract for grass cutting and like some other things. Like, why can't you? Do, like, they're already programmed to the idea of a subscription for yeah. certain services, pest control. Yeah. Whatever else. What What makes a driveway different? It's very true. It's a great idea. And it I makes like your customers it. sticky. Yeah. You know, I, I love anything that can be sticky. If I can keep them on the hook for that and then go, hey, I was just over here and I saw those three dead trees. Yeah. You know, do you need to just come in and clear that out? Or, oh, I saw that, you know, I don't know what invasive plant you have in your area starting to encroach and you're losing part of your backyard. We can come in and mulch all that out. And 
Yeah. You know, oh, you had standing water over there. You really need a drain. Yeah, or a little material build this up or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You're already there. They're like, just do it. Yeah, like you said, the relationship, you build a rapport with these people because they're probably going to be at the same house for 10, 5, 10, 20 years, depending on where you're at. Mm -hmm. And and like driveway maintenance is a very, I say this politely, it's a low level skill. It doesn't take much work. It doesn't take much skill to go in there and like grade out a gravel driveway. Like it's probably the easiest thing you could teach a new operator. So if you look at it from that point of view, like, oh, as this team grows, we could actually put lower cost employees that are well-trained on a, on the maintenance route. Yeah. And they can actually generate a healthy profit for the company while they continue to get stick time and learning and seeing things. And Well, like with the attachments that you sell that you were just talking about, it uh, makes it a whole lot. I mean, it's it's so simple. Excuse me. If you're watching the video, you saw me sneeze. If you're not, that's why the silence was there. So I apologize. But yeah, and I'm a firm believer in investing for, you know, like talking about like buying back your time when we looked at, you know, I'm giving up my calendar, my schedule creates more free time for me and all that. Like, I think tools and like everyone talks to me about, oh, I can do the same job with a bucket. I'm like, you sure can. Not saying you can't, but I can do it three times faster with less manual raking at the end of it. Yeah. Which means the machine ran for, 45 minutes less, which means my fuel life's going to last longer. My oil life's like, if you start breaking down all the little pieces of what that $5,000 attachment gives you and the return on the investment over a five-year period, it's crazy that people don't invest in the right tools for the work they want to do consistently. Well, like you said, with with putting the maybe a new operator or something on there with that kind of attachment, you're less in my mind, you're less likely to mess it up. Uh, And I'll tell you what, those graders, the blades only go down about an inch and three quarter to two inches deep. So you can't gouge out a roadway. Like I put a, I put our 14 year old nephew in the skid steer just because he loves the skid steer. Yeah. I mean, he went and graded it. Yeah. We had to touch it up, but he didn't, he didn't ruin it. Yeah. Or like, you know, with a bucket, you tilt the wrong way or not (laughs) pay. You look away for a second, you nose dive into the freaking ground. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, I keep, a fourteen-year-old kid is out grading driveways, and like after an hour, he probably did as good of a job as I did, right? Like, yeah, just because of the tool, the, the the tool made the difference. Yeah, 100%. yeah, yeah. So I mean, even like we've got that hydro bucket that it's an actual bucket with a soil conditioner wheel built in the in the heel of it, and they're not yeah. inexpensive. I mean, they're nine grand, but you don't have to take a power rake and a bucket. You can use a smaller trailer. Yeah, You don't have to take the time to drive back to the trailer to swap attachments, get out, swap the hoses, and then go back to finish a piece of, like, like we started doing final grade work on houses and rough grading, and we were in and out so fast. And I was like, the time savings alone, like, it's worth the the investment if we do enough of this work. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't buy it for a single project, but, and then I actually used the power rake on that countless times on projects that I never even envisioned, like just touching up where the, where the tracks made a mess. Yeah. Just using that power rate feature. Like yeah. you've got it. You're like, Oh, I might as well just zip that real quick. Right. And clean that up for two seconds. So I don't even take, I haven't used the regular bucket in since I got it. Cause of that, that wheel on the back. Well, and, and I like a low profile bucket cause I have better sight line to the edge. Yeah. But I hate like you lose carrying capacity. Right. This one is a low profile bucket ish. It's not really low profile because they've got to have that drum in the heel. Right. But to make up for that, they extended the depth of the bucket. So I don't feel I lost any material handling capabilities, but I've got great sight lines on the edge of the bucket. I don't have to lean forward to see it. Right. Yeah. Now I can flip big rocks to get them out of the way. I mean, so I, to me, I just, it's a very well designed bucket. And, you know, obviously I'd love to sell more of them, but that's not why I'm talking about. I'm talking about the right tool for the right job, right? Like, yeah, right, right, right. like I wouldn't yeah. dig a septic system with a trencher on a skid steer. I'd want a mini excavator. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah exactly. You know? Yeah. I wouldn't even dig septic systems with the excavator attachment for a skid steer because they just got to be cumbersome, slow, cumbersome. I've never used one, but they just, I don't, I don't like them. I just don't like look of them. I don't, 
I feel like they've got a purpose for certain types of jobs if you do a lot of those jobs. But I mean, if you're doing like larger hole, like you need the right tool for the job. That's why guys got to buy a mini X. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel the attachments are the same way. Like if you look at the return on investment, I always tell everybody do a return on investment. And if it cash flows, buy it. Yeah. I mean, because if you're going to use it once, you're probably going to use it again. Yeah. We sold one of those graders to a guy in Texas and he actually called back. He's buying some different attachments now. But he told me in the first three weeks he owned it, he was he was so efficient on the grading projects that he had for these corporations that he was doing work because he's down in the oil field area. He said, my profit more than paid for the grader itself in the first two and a half weeks. Just from probably all the time he was saving, all the fuel he was saving. Yep. Yeah. So you now he's got you know $6,500 attachment that made him more than that in profit with an ROI and now it's, he's going to be able to use it for four more years and be how much more efficient. Yeah. Insane. Just from that so, little, piece. just from one little piece. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like you got to look at that same, I take that same approach to every aspect of my business, whether it's softwares yeah. or like investing time and in creating the SOPs. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to hate doing this for three hours, but then I never have to do it again because the employee can do it. Yeah. When I feel like too, that's why like a lot of guys don't make websites where they pay for someone to do their website for them or something. Cause they, like I made my own and yeah, for a couple hours, it was a little, it was rough cause I'm not really good with computer side of things, mm -hmm. so, but then I got it done and it was like, okay, well I just saved X amount of money from paying somebody else to do it. And like you said, just that little bit of work now will pay off at the end. Yeah, if you don't have a website, like either pay somebody or suck it up and do it because you don't have a brick and mortar store. Nope. You know, like that's your like that's your brick and mortar store. And like when we go to do interviews for the podcast or we're looking for guests, like if they don't have a website, I'm really hesitant because I'm like, are they just a weekend warrior or are they actually building and growing a thriving business? Yeah. Because if you if they didn't invest in a website, I'm like, hmm. How serious are they about their business and what valuable information are they going to be able to share with the audience? Yeah. I mean, it's not in like with social media and stuff and like a lot of stuff comes off Facebook and, and stuff like that and Google, but it's like, I guess it's one of those, one of those stepping stones in my opinion, you know, is, um, and I've, I've probably gotten, you know, a couple of emails from my website and stuff like that, but I feel like it's just more professional. When someone looks you up on Google, someone looks you up on Facebook, whatever, if it's just having that extra little bit, I feel like makes you a step ahead of the competition. Right. It just takes that. Oh, they are a legitimate business. Yeah. You know, like, oh, he did invest in a website or, you know, like he is serious about what he does. Like, it's just, it's just that little mental thing. Yeah. I agree. hundred percent. Especially for people that you don't have a relationship with. Yeah. Which essentially is 90% of your customers. Right. You know, cause what, I mean, it, cause the problem is, is, you know, a lot of people that, you know, probably don't want to pay for your services at the end of the day. They, you know, they think they can get it cheaper. Yeah. They know you. So 90, 95% of your customers are going to be strangers. Right. So you got your digital right now in this day and age, really you're, I mean, word of mouth still is in my opinion, King, but you having a digital, you know, that may start the conversation, but then they're going to go on Google and look you up. Yep. And, and do you have a referral program? Like, a, like, like a have you created, have you created an offer that if I, like if you and I met on the street and I didn't know you and I'm like, Oh, I don't, I don't have any property that would ever require those services. Yeah. But I think what you do is really cool. Right. And you're like, Hey, if you have any friends that do do this and then in, in exchange, I'll give you X, Y, Z. No, I've never, I've never done that. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of a referral program because you can ref, you could offer it to your clients mm -hmm. that you're doing work for. And I always like to ask for the referral before I do the work. Yeah. And like for a perfect example is I asked the girl, I asked the girl, she's, we're doing, looking at our driveway and I'm like, well, I'm like, do you have anyone else in the neighborhood or anyone, you know, nearby that would also maybe benefit from these services? If you do, because we could do them all at one time, I could give you and them a reduction in the, in the cost. Yeah. Because I'm already here. I don't have to bring the truck and trailer back and forth three, four times. And right. We can share the rock from the quarry if, you know, 
And sure as shit, she called her neighbor. He's like, yeah, send him over. And we booked two jobs right there. We hadn't even done the work yet. Yeah. Now, so, I mean, it is a great, that's a great thing. Great idea. Yeah. And then like, we just built a referral program for one of our clients in the coaching program. Um, he, his wife's really big into horses and like, they've got an enormous network of people that own horse properties. Oh yeah. And I was like, why don't you specialize in maintenance management and building of whatever horse properties need? And because of your experience with horses, they're already going to know that you're going to do it. What's best for the animal. Yeah. So, and then their friend owns that. I don't even know what they call it when they cut and trim horses nails. Oh, um, uh, what's the name? I, I can't think of the name. Of that. Yeah. But I do know what you're talking about. But their friend had that kind of business. So I said, why don't you offer anyone that owns like anyone that you meet? Hey, if you hook me up or rec recommend me and get me onto that property, I'll pay for your next horse nail trimming. Yeah. And now you're supporting another local business. Yeah. And it just becomes reciprocity, reciprocity, reciprocity. Yeah. No, that is. That's really, that's a really good, good idea to uh, think about. Because, I mean, as you know, Lee, like you can talk to somebody about your business, like, oh, man, I got five people that could use your services. And then you get all excited. Well, they get back on whatever is important in their life and totally forget to do anything for you or introduce you. But now that you give them something that they can tangibly see that helps them in addition to helping you. Yeah. The likelihood of them passing that along is higher. Because they get something out of it, too. Yeah. What have you done for me lately? Right? Isn't that how we live? Right, Isn't that how yeah. we all live our life? What have you done for me lately? Right. Yeah. 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 It's all about me. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah. 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 I trucked your shit for five years with no accidents. And I have one little fender bender. Now you're firing me. <laughs> yeah. Ruin. Take my license. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Oh man, that's some funny stuff. So are you still the, the single owner operator or do you have some part-time help or full-time help yet? No, it's just still just me. It's still just me. Yeah. I'm, I want to hire somebody this year. Okay. That was my next question. Yeah. That's my goal for this year is, is um, when it gets warmer, you know, it's still cold, it's still kind of the slow season ish. And um, what's your, like with, what's your vision with hiring this first employee? Like what, what do you see them doing so you can be freed up to work on other areas of your business? I would like to hire someone that I can kind of train as a, as a ground guy first, you know, run a saw, run a shovel, um, and then train in the equipment. Now, if you already know how to run the equipment, cool, you know, but I'd like to train somebody really to do everything that I do um, mm -hmm. and just get them. Cause like you said, it's the vision, right? I don't want to hire somebody and it's like, okay, you know what? You're just, you're just a ground guy. Leave me alone do whatever. Like I'm, I'm really big into like mentorship. So if I bring you onto my team, I mean, you're going to see all sides. I mean, you're going to see everything. You might not see like the in debt financial situation that we're in because right. that's, I got to do that. But like how I talk to customers, the uh, problems that arise or something like this or, or something, you know, something that comes up or Hey, I'm, if I hire somebody that's got more experience than me, I'm cool with that too. You know, hire somebody that maybe has a different perspective on how to complete a project that I don't see. That's even better because then they can bring knowledge to the team that I don't have. So yeah. really, you know, I'm, I would be very grateful for that too, to hire someone that has a, maybe a different set of skills than I do so that the company just continues to grow an over position. Nice. Um, I'm going to give you two pieces of unsolicited advice. Okay. I always throw the unsolicited in there because nobody ever asked me, but okay, I'm telling you anyway. One, your first employee, you already know him. Somewhere yeah. in your circle, your network, your communities that you're a part of, you already know the best. You already know the person that's going to help you grow your business. Yeah. Just figure out who that person is. Yeah. Number two, hire for desire, not for skill set. Okay. Because if somebody has a desire and like a want to learn this business and he thinks being outdoors is great and doing all that's wonderful, like you can teach him every aspect of operating equipment and how to see the property of what, what trees stay, like all that's teachable. Yeah. You can't teach work ethic, you can't teach showing up on time, you can't teach manners, like they got them or they don't. True. Yeah, very true. 
you know, and like so many people hired the guy with 10 years experience, but then he shows up hungover and he cusses out the customer and everyone on the job site's an idiot, but him. And now the whole, the whole culture erodes. Yeah. So those are my two pieces of unsolicited advice. Those are good, good pieces of advice. I appreciate thank, that. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. What, what are you like outside of hiring your first employee this year? Like what other key areas of your business are you focused on for 2024? Like, do you have any like goals or goals that you've set and whether it be financial or anything else in your business? Yeah. I mean, I would like to, I would like to, uh, double, um, the average financially. I would like to double that. I would like to continue to grow, um, on social media, you know, continue to upgrade the content that I post, continue to, you know, um, uh, just get better at that, get better at, uh, more quality and more consistency mm -hmm. as far as that, as that side of things go. Um, and just continue to grow my, to grow my name, you know, to the general public and continue to stick it out there. And I think, uh, that's really just my main focus for 2024 on the business side. And of course, working on myself every single day, every day, every day, it's, it's got to get better. Um, I mean, I was in situations this past week that I told my wife, I said, if this would have happened to me a year ago, it would have freaking crushed me, you know, but I was able to look at it and act differently because of the personal development I've been going through the past year to where it was, it was ended and it ended in a better situation. Yep. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously financially I want to grow, I want to hire my first employee and I want to be able to provide better and more consistent content um, for social media because I mean, what, nowadays you got to do it. What issues do you like when you say better, more consistent content, like I'm assuming that you have a vision that you want to make content. And there's something that you're like stops you from doing it. Like, is it just like, I don't know what to write or is it like the white screen? Like, I don't know what the, where to get started. I think, like what? I think it's more just thinking about it. Like mm -hmm. having that mindset of, okay, well I need to get out here. I need to take pictures. I need to take a video here. I need to like, Oh, well this, this could be, this could contribute here or being more of a personality on there to where people get to know me before they know me. Yeah. Okay. I'm so telling you. Know, it makes a massive difference. Like with our coaching and consulting side of the business before the podcast, like it was like a sales call. Yeah. Here's what I can give you. And Oh, wait now. Like we can also guarantee that like it was a sales call. Yeah. Since the podcast, people are calling me going, Oh man, I, I'm excited to work with you. Like, it's more like it's a relationship. They feel like they know me. They, they reference things all the time. And I'm like, how can we help you get to the growing there? And are you comfortable investing this money to get there? And they're like, yes or no. And then, but it's not a sales call anymore because of this podcast and, and them having the ability to feel like they know me before they even get on the phone call. Yeah. Cause people want to do business with people. Yep. Not businesses. Yep. That's been one thing that I've worked, had to work on is putting myself out there. Cause as silly as it sounds is it is pretty nerve wracking to put yourself on a freaking camera and post a video of yourself on the internet. <laughs> You know, I, I never I'm wired different. I didn't mind it at all. Man. If you don't like it, I don't care. But yeah. but like for me, that I didn't have I was off for so long. Like to me, that was a big thing. Like yeah. I was like, you know, yeah. You know, but um so that's one thing I want to get better at. So people know me before they really before they actually meet me. So it's more of a connection going into the business. Right? Okay. Lee, I have two more pieces of unsolicited advice now. I mean, I, I you're on a roll today. All right, perfect. Two by two, here we come. Yeah. One of the things that I did myself, and I've taught a lot of guys to do this, is you put the solution to the problem where it is, right? So the problem that you're not taking the content or taking your photos or your videos yeah. always happens before you start your skid steer, right? And then now you're working, you're like, oh, shit, I forgot to take that video. Yeah. Get a labeler, get a piece of tape, get something and put a note right next to the start button that says... Did you get your content? So every time you go to start your machine, you got to read that and you go, Oh, I haven't, I got to get out of skid steer and go do it. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's, that's first idea. And then number two is if you're always wondering what type of content to create, yeah, there's a simple framework that every job you do could create multiple pieces of content for you. Yeah. All you have to do is follow the problem solution outcome theory. Oh, okay. Hey, this is Leah Mata, Miss Johnson's property. She's had this going on, da, 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 da. problem. We're out here today. We brought the skid steer, the mulching head, and we're going to clear this up. It leaves this small, fine da, 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 solution. 
Yeah. When we're done with this, Mrs. Johnson's not going to have to worry about mosquitoes or da, 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 whatever they are. Outcome. Hmm. Problem customer has, solution you provide, the outcome the customer is going to receive. That's good. I mean, but, I mean, you can make content out of every job you do following yeah. problem, solution, outcome. Right. It just yeah. takes the what am I going to what am I going to post today out? Right. No, I like it. Yeah. I feel like I should be paying you for your coaching services today. <laughs> oh man, no, no, no. I mean, we can do that later. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my Venmo is this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but here's my Venmo. Oh man. Um, so on a personal level, like what are your personal goals for your own development? I want to be more um level-headed, more calm. I want to be able to be more positive in situations, not allow my emotions to get the best of me. You know, um, really just start looking at things in a progressive, positive light instead of like a negative, you know, crap, you know, this just happened or this is going to throw me off. Like, I don't want to be rattled by stuff, you know, and I feel like that's what I need to do, not only for my business, but for my marriage and for my household, and for my family is I got to be that pillar that is unmoving. You know, it don't matter what happened. I'm getting my stuff done. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping on track. You know, I'm not bringing problems home. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not mad or on the house, stuff like that. Like that's, I really want to, I want to dial that in this year and really give myself that next level on a personal level. But that requires everyday work. I mean, I love that, man. I love that. Yeah. I think for me, like I want to create solid habits of all the things that I know I should be doing. So like I knew that the morning routine was going to be difficult for me. Yeah. Cause I was, I was out of all routine. Right. Yeah. So I actually created a spreadsheet and put it in my bathroom and I had boxes to check every day. Like, did you wake up at this time? Did you eat your breakfast? Did you read? Did you ride? And yeah. at first it was like the accountability to do it. And then by the middle of the month, I'd look at it and go, there's no way I'm going to have blank boxes the rest of the month. Like it became a game, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like I'm doing that. Um, but part of that for me is I want to buy back some more time in, in my personal life so that there's a local charity that I used to do a lot of work with. And we raise a lot of money for them. Like we've created an event that creates, I don't know, 20, 30, $40,000 a year for them to support and feed kids in the neighborhood and help with after school yeah. care and some other things. And they had a, sh a staff turnover and we all, I buy Christmas presents every year for like 10 to 20 kids for their yeah. angel tree program. And this year I'm like, Hey, nobody's called me about the angel tree. So I called down there. I'm like, Hey, you guys still doing the angel tree? She's like, yeah. I'm like, well, I need some kids. She's like, Oh, they're already gone. And I got angry. Cause I'm like, man, I take 10 to 20 kids every year. And like, you don't even call me. And I was like, I'm so busy with my own job that outside of the times that I want to give, whether it be this one promotion a year or this one Christmas thing, they forgot who I was. So I took ownership of that. And I'm like, I need to spend more time and be more present with this organization if I want to continue that relationship. Yeah. And that's, I think being present is so important too. I, I mean, I talk to my wife about it all the time. It's like, cause we're both busy. I mean, I'm doing this, she's doing her full time plus she's doing classes. So it's like when we're together, we need to be present together you know because at the end of the day we're not going to remit like we're not going to remember how busy we were but we're going to remember if we were present or not when we yep. were together it's like you know like it's it's like that same saying when they talk about with kids right like every every man says i work this hard so i can provide for my kids yeah well all the kids gonna remember is that you weren't present when he was a kid or if you were there you weren't <laughs> present when you were there yeah like they're not going to remember the new bike you bought them or the one vacation, but they remember, yeah, dad was never around. That's what they remember. But then even if you are like guys that travel or guys that wherever, if you're present in the moments at your home, that's their what's money. Gonna, that's what's going to stick. Yep. Those are the moments they remember. Yep. hundred percent, man. hundred yep. percent. God, this just feels like a natural stopping point. I don't know why it feels that way to me, but I'm just like, I don't know what else we could talk about that would elaborate more on what we've already covered. Yeah. No, it's been a good conversation. Yeah, this has been fantastic, man. Fantastic. Yeah, Lee, thanks so much for being open, vulnerable, truthful with us and the audience. And um, like, especially on the personal side, I know for myself, sometimes it's hard to yeah. one, admit to yourself that you need to grow and to your downfalls and why you're growing. So I appreciate you being transparent. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me on. It was a good yeah. time. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, guys, that wraps up another episode of the Skid Steer Nation podcast. Um, head over to skidsteernation.com, take a look at that greater and hydro bucket and other attachments we have available. And if you're listening to this and it, it's just struck a chord that you want to become a better person or a better business owner, check out groundbreakinggrowth.com. That's the coaching consulting side of our business. If you like it, schedule a time to talk with me directly and see if we can help you become better people and better business owners. So until the next episode, guys, keep the hands on the sticks, the skid steers right side up and make some money. Take care, guys.